Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro, with a comprehensive tutorial showing you every parameter behavior in Motion 5. It's a long one, so let's get started. The first thing is first, what in the heck and crap is a parameter behavior? A parameter behavior is a great way to apply essentially automated animations to anything in motion. So you can apply it both to your position, rotation, skill, all of that. You can apply it to different filters if you have any. So if I had like a bad TV effect on this, you would be able to apply it to that. You could apply it to your shapes. The next question is how do I even apply a parameter behavior? Well, if you jump on over, he will go into our properties here. Let's say we want to apply a parameter behavior to our position. You can right click it and you can go down to add a parameter behavior and select from this list. Or you can go up here to behaviors, go down to parameter and you'll have this list here. You can also click this down arrow, add a parameter behavior and so on and so forth. The first item on this list is audio. So I'm going to right click, apply it to the scale of our object. Now we're going to want to bring in some audio obviously so I can do that with command I and I'll just bring in this song here that I got from upbeat.io by the way which is free music so go check out that link in the description if you want that. You can click this well here and we're going to apply the audio there and you can see that it analyzed the audio and you can see that the waves are happening here. So now the scale of our object is going to apply according to the height of our audio waveform. So if I press play you can see our our rectangles really growing. Now the animation's not particularly good, so we could definitely dial it in. We could set selective frequencies that apply to our rectangle. We could set the scale here to five, so it's just massive. It's really up to you how you want to dial this in. You can get some really incredible results if you just stick it out. So the next item on this list, if we click here, add parameter behavior and average. Now average is not going to affect anything as of yet, but if I click this record button and I push play, I can move this square around all I want like that. And it's just creating keyframes. And if I push command eight, we can actually see all of those keyframes happening. So what average does is it averages out the position of all of those keyframes. And it's gonna look a little bit crazy like an explosion's happening here, but it is just doing some math to average out the position of all those keyframes, thus smoothing the animation. So let's crank this up to a full 20 and and it's going to be much less crazy in the movement or I can disable the average and we can see how it was originally and you can see that average is doing its job. The next item on this list is clamp. So we are going to actually clamp the scale on this. So we'll go to transform scale and we'll just do all. So what we can do is set the maximum scale of this object. Let's say that we want the maximum scale to be 45%. So now this object cannot go above 45%. No matter how much I scale it up, it will never go above 45. As well as with a minimum, so we could make it so it can never get smaller than 10. The next one on the list is going to be exponential. And I'm gonna apply this to the rotation here of our object and we could do it on the Z axis. So I'll click that, add a parameter behavior and set exponential. So what exponential does is it starts off very subtle and then towards the end gets very intense. So I'll show you what that looks like. So let's say we wanna have an exponential rotation of 5,000. This is gonna start off very slow if you look at my keyframes here, but towards the end it's gonna really ramp up in speed. So it starts off slow and then it slowly gets faster as if maybe the wind is blowing it and it's getting faster and faster and soon it will go to a full 5,000. So this is a great way to achieve a really smooth ramp in your animation. The next item on this list is link. To show link, I'm going to actually link the colors between these two and you can apply link to just about anything. So we'll click this arrow, add a parameter behavior and set it to link. And I'm gonna drag in rectangle B and it's already gonna know that I want to use the color because of uh, applying link link to the color of the original rectangle. So now if I go to this rectangle, I can dial in the color and you'll see how the two objects are linked. You could do this also with position. You could do this 
with rotation. You can do it with all sorts of things, and this is a great way to build on-screen controls in Final Cut Pro for your plugins. The next item on this list is logarithmic. So I'm gonna add the parameter behavior to the scale of our object here. And what this is going to do, I'm gonna set the percentage of the start value to negative 100%, and then our end value, I might as well make it 50% more just so we can really see what's happening. Okay, so this is going to create what's called a logarithmic curve. If you happen to know math, you understand exactly what that is. Um, I had to Google it, so I definitely am really bad at math. Anyway, so we've got this curve going on, so it's starting off really small, blasting into existence, and then it's just gonna slowly grow over the rest of the timeline. The next item on this list is MIDI. Now MIDI works with a MIDI keyboard and unfortunately I do not have a MIDI keyboard so I can't show you how to use this. But you can use the learning feature to learn which knobs apply to different parts of your object. So you could set a rotation maybe if you had just like a volume knob or something like that. Um, you could set it so that it animates to certain notes. So MIDI can be super cool. However, I've never been given the privilege to work with the MIDI feature in motion because I don't have a MIDI keyboard. Negate might be a bit confusing as to why you would want to use it, but I will show you a quick example that hopefully makes sense. So if I push command D, I can duplicate this and I'm going to link both of these with a parameter behavior. So I'll achieve link and I will drag in this rectangle. So now both rectangles are traveling with the same rectangle. Now, if we apply negate, we'll go up here to parameter and we can apply negate. Make sure that negate is happening in the stack above link and then this, effect will work. We'll go to properties, transform, position, all. So now anywhere we move this bottom rectangle, the top rectangle is going to be in the complete opposite direction. So if you were, for example, going to make a lens flare and you wanted optical flares happening over here, you could create a bright light source, link this and negate it. And then those flares would go in the complete opposite direction. So you could create a cool flare plugin or something like that. So I don't normally do this in videos, but this video took a significant amount of time to put together and it was made possible by my patrons. So I just wanted to take a quick moment and share with you everything that's happening over on Patreon. Firstly, Patreon really helps my channel grow. It makes it financially possible for me to take a day off my regular editing jobs to work on larger videos like this one. Also, I try to upload as many plugins and project files that I can to my Patreon. Currently, there are 15 downloads and that list just keeps growing. Plus, there's also a special Discord channel where we can talk about all things Final Cut Pro. I also have patron-only live streams where I show my process for building plugins and editing videos. So my hope is to keep growing that list of things on Patreon and to make it more valuable to you than it is to me. So if you are interested in investing in this channel, consider joining me over on Patreon for only four bucks a month. And that's enough self-promotion for right now. So let's get back to the video. The next one is Oscillate, and I'm actually going to apply this to the scale. So what Oscillate does, you can actually see it down here in the keyframe editor. It creates these waves. So this is really great if you have a continuous animation that you want to go back and forth throughout the entirety of your scene. So I could actually up the speed to get it going really fast. And then also you could change the wave shape to something like square, and it'll be on, off, on, off. Just like that, you could change it to sawtooth and it'll start from zero, grow to the full hundred, or you could do triangle and it'll be sharper motion so it won't be super smooth. Um, so you can definitely play around with these and get very different animation types just using oscillate. The next one on the list is overshoot. I love overshoot. And if you've been watching my channel at all on motion, you've probably seen me use the overshoot feature. So overshoot just overshoots the end value by a little bit, and then it comes back to what you set it. So it's a great way to get dynamic looking animation. So let's just set this down to half a second in speed. We'll set our start value to negative 100%. And if I play it back, you can see how it overshoots the final scale. Let's see if I look at the scale here of the rectangle. You can see it's 106%. And then at the end, it will bounce back down to a full 100%. Also, you could set the acceleration amount to a full 100. And now it's 112% instead of 106%. So that accelerate is really nice for 
really adding to the animation. So I love Overshoot, use it all the time, especially for graphics for the channel. So Quantize is a little bit interesting. It's almost like average, except for it's much choppier. So if you wanted more of, um, I guess an 8-bit animation would be a good way to explain it. So again, I'm going to push this record button, move this around all over the place like so and you can see we've got all these crazy animations happening so if i take the quantize animation and it's applying to rotation let's change that to position let's bump up the step size and now things are going to get a lot choppier so it's almost going to blink into existence it's like it's taking out the middle keyframes that is quantize it's basically the complete opposite of average and rather than smoothing out things it makes things choppier the next one on the list is Ramp. Now Ramp I use almost as much as I use Overshoot. Ramp is a really great way to get smooth animations. So if I set my start value to negative 100%, it will go from zero to a full 100% in scale. So if we want to smooth that out, we can actually drag this curvature slider up. And so now the animation that happens is gonna be very, very smooth. So I love using Ramp when I don't want the animation to have any dynamics to it. I just want it nice, clean, and simple. That's that's where ramp comes into play. Randomize. Randomize is really cool. It's great if you want to randomize the position, which is what I'm going to use. So we can drag up the position like crazy. You can see it happening here in the keyframe editor. We can set the apply mode to add and subtract. So it's going above and below zero. And so it's just going to completely randomize where the square is during the duration. We can also dial back the noisiness and frequency to get smoother randomization. So it's really up to you how you want this to look. So yeah, I use randomization all the time, especially for using glitch effects or something like that. The next one is rate, which I will apply to the rotation here. So I'll add the parameter behavior and set that to rate. What rate is going to do, it will consistently go at a perfect rate. Let's say we want this to turn 10 degrees for every second. This is going to apply for every second of animation. This is just going to consistently animate in this perfect circle for the duration of the rate and you can set the curvature so that it starts off kind of smooth so you can see how it's got this nice smooth curve to it and then it just goes to the perfect rate so reverse is a bit strange because what you need to do to have reverse is you need to have the tail of reverse over the entire duration of your animation. So if I push O here, we'll trim it down. Now this reverse is going to do the opposite of whatever I applied to the ramp animation. So it'll shrink down the rectangle. This could be useful if you wanted to create a plugin and you're like, I want it to whip pan to the left or whip pan to the right. You could, rather than reanimating everything, you could just have the reverse checkbox and, uh, and that would make things a little bit simpler to work with. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a little weird to work with. Um, there are better options. For example, let's say I had an animation here and if I wanted to reverse this animation, a really easy way to do that is if you push command eight and get your keyframe editor, you can select all of your keyframes, right click, and you can do reverse keyframes and so it will actually do what that behavior was doing and I find that easier to work with but it's totally up to you and your preferences the next one is stop so what stop will do is exactly what it says it will just stop the animation exactly wherever the stop behavior is so we could change that and it'll stop the animation there so this could be definitely useful for different animation types um, just depending on how you like to work with parameters the next parameter looks like it's the last one but there's actually one more after this so stick around um, it is the wriggle parameter behavior so from what I've seen wriggle is very very similar to randomize I honestly can't totally find a difference between the two other than according to motion 5's help manual it's a little bit slower than randomize extremely similar honestly i would just use whichever one is near to your mouse when you're clicking around maybe there's somebody smarter than me in the comments that can explain uh better benefits of using wriggle but that is what wriggle is the last parameter behavior is actually hiding up here in the behaviors list we'll go to parameter and we'll go to custom 
the custom parameter behavior sounds like it opens up an entire universe of possibilities, but it doesn't. But it does have its uses, so I'll show you how to use it. So if we go to properties, um, a good one that this is useful for is, for example, the position properties. So you can add animations to this custom property. So I'll add one there and we'll move forward a little bit and slide this over. So now this object has this animation, but it's all within the parameter behavior, which means that none of the animations are applied here to this other position parameter. So I could actually have separate parameters that I work with that aren't affected, which is great if you have an object that needs its animation moved around to a different position. So rather than this thinking that the object is dead center, it's actually subtracting the position based off of wherever the object originally was placed. Hopefully that makes sense. It definitely has its uses. It's a little strange to wrap your head around, but definitely for more complex things, this is extremely useful. If you like a advanced motion five tutorials just like this one, I strongly suggest you check out this spotlight tutorial I made. With that being said, I hope to see you in the next one.